Unfortunately, the Yankees' 2022 season comes to a disappointing end as they fall to the Astros 6-5. to five. So it's a four-game sweep in the ALCS. The Astros are on to the World Series against the Phillies. And for the Yankees, they wanted to make this competitive. They wanted to play some clean baseball against the Astros and conquer their foe. They were not able to do it. It didn't happen, Bob, and that's why tonight is a sobering night for the Yankees. It's sobering any time your season ends because it starts in February with great thoughts and great aspirations and when it ends in October with a thud that's sobering. What's also sobering for the Yankees is this was another winnable game in this series. They played four games in this series lost all four to the Astros. Three of them were winnable. Tonight they had a three to nothing lead with Nestor Cortez on the mound. They visited him on the mound and talked about whether or not he was ready to continue in the game. He convinced them that he was. He gives up a three run homer to Jeremy Pena. Later in the game they're winning five to four. Altuve beats Loizaga to first base narrowly for an infield single. The next ball could have been a double play that helped get Loizaga out of the inning. The transfer from Torres to IKF doesn't work. That allows the Astros to eventually tie the game and take the lead. And just another game got away from the Yankees. Well, you look at it, every time the Astros um, or the Yankees made a mistake, the Astros took advantage of it. They did. Yesterday with Bader dropping a fly ball, boom, two run home run. Then with the, um, I don't know if it was so much Torres' fault on the toss on the double play, he gets an E4, and they take advantage of it right there. Uh, the Yankees weren't able to take advantage of anything. They just weren't. And this is the one time they didn't get a true great starting pitching performance. It looked like something was up with Nestor Cortez. They said it was with the, uh, the groin issue, and you understand that because you see his velocity drop. But I'll tell you the most um, heart-rendering thing about this or heartbreaking thing about this. In 2017, the Yankees had the fact that the Astros cheated. In 2019, a lot of people within the Yankee organization felt something fishy was going on. This this time, nothing. You got beaten, you got swept, and there has to be another way to do this because you cannot get past the Astros. When the Yankees show up in spring training every, every February, you're gauging yourself about who's the best team in the American League, and it always comes down to you have to find a way to beat the Houston Astros. For four games in the American League CS, you can say that the Houston Astros are just a better team. They have a better rotation. They have a better bullpen. We watched them four games offensively. When they needed to hit a home run, they were able to hit a home run. When they needed to play small ball and grind it out and have a big base hit, Bregman comes to mind for me in this game. Two strike hitting, dumps one in the right field, drives in another run. They're a better team. And the Yankees, at this point, the first half of the year, they were comparing themselves to one of the best teams ever in in all of Major League Baseball history, they couldn't beat the Houston Astros again, and it's back to the drawing board. They got to find a way to beat this team. Well, one thing that we always hear is that analytics are good over a 162 game season. Yankees ended up winning 99 games, and then it's a crapshoot in the postseason. But is it really, or is your analytics just not working? Because the Astros are a heavily analytic team, and they're going to the World Series for the fourth time in six years, so it hasn't been that much of a crapshoot for them.